Every night around Sydney, there are places that you can go where the sky fills up with thousands of flying foxes as they head out on their nightly feeds. Here, you can have up to 30,000 bats flying over your head on a nightly basis. Because of this, a lot of people don't realise that the numbers of flying foxes are actually in decline. In addition to flying foxes, there are microbats. And under this bridge that the flying foxes fly over every night is a colony of small microbats called Gould's Waddle Bat. They're only about 14 grams. Gould's Waddle Bat aren't a threatened species, but many microbats are. So we've got a few different flying fox here. We have three out of the four mainland Australian species, which is the grey-headed flying fox um, and the black flying fox and two little red flying foxes. I'm popping some blossom in. Okay, I've definitely put a little bit too much in there, but that'll be good for now. I can actually smell the <laughs> It's good, nectar. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. One of the really positive things that has happened recently is that the government has been subsidising large full exclusion fruit nets, which has um, enabled them to phase out licences. Previously, farmers would be able to apply for licences to shoot a number of flying foxes, and it's a really inhumane and it's really an effective um, way of dealing with flying foxes that come in and raid crops. But we've found it's been taken up really well by a lot of farmers, yeah. is getting the subsidies. Um, now, as I think this is a nice segue. I'm just segue. To listen, we've got a bit of a different sound coming down here. Yeah, yeah. So Sarah's shown us all about the flying fox, but what we've got back here are actually microbats. They're tiny. They're about the size of a mouse with wings. Most people have never seen them, probably don't even know they exist. And I'm really excited to have a look. We have a, a couple of that's colony was destroyed when a wall came mm. down and they were all orphaned. have to feed them. Hey, little guys. This is a little micro bat, a southern free tail bat. She is, that's fully grown. Yes, this is fully grown. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not looking at a little baby. This is that six gram of adult bat. Yes, nine grams, but yes. Oh. I hand reared her, so she is more used to me than, say, freshly rescued micro bat. I've just woken her up. She's active, so they go into a torpor, um, which is a, like a mini hibernation. It's probably not correct to use those terms interchangeably. It's where they lower their metabolic rate. It's a mechanism of conserving energy. They do that even at this time of year? Yeah, abso heat. absolutely. They do it in heat. They do it um, in response to heat, cold, food availability. They're really clever little things. Yes. Some of these microbats live in caves and others in hollows. Yeah. These little guys are crevice dwellers. There are other species that will utilise cave or cave-like structures. This is what they're eating, these little mealworms, but usually they're catching their own food. Yeah, yep, so they fly around at night time predating on insects, depending on the species, but they can eat up to and over half of their body weight per night. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of hamburgers. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a lot of insects that aren't biting us, I guess, as well. Exactly. So they were actually roosting in a house. In somebody's, yeah. With so many trees being chopped down, they've yeah. had to come up with these alternate habitats. Just like the flying foxes, they have very specific roosting requirements. We know some things, but there's a lot that we don't know. There are bat boxes and you can make bat boxes, put them up into trees. It's a little bit hard to know sometimes if we're helping yeah. the right bats exactly. and it's changing the assemblage of bats, but yeah. I think we are doing a lot of work with that. We do have bat boxes that are available and I think yeah. there is definitely a use for them in some areas. Now, what we've said a couple of times is that the flying fox make noises yeah. that we can hear and generally microbats yes. don't. Okay, the calls that you don't hear, they have that as another tool for hunting and navigation. But is it right, even with the microbats, yeah. they're not blind as a bat? No, no bats are blind. Flying foxes have vision that is as good as ours is by day and 20 times yeah. better than I mean, ours at do. night time. They, they really follow me yeah. around. You know, they yeah. get eye contact and yes. give you a little smile. Otherwise known as sky puppies. And I think you can see why. <laughs> sky puppies. Yes. Just as a final message to people yes. who you know, I've seen bats maybe for the first time yep. and what, what can they do? What are the big things? Okay, so things that you can do on a local level would be to look up for bats on power lines. If you see a bat on power lines that you report it really quickly to your um, wildlife organisation, we say um, look up to save a bat. 
The other things that you can do is to have responsible backyard fruit netting. So make sure you never choose a net that has a large aperture that you can put your finger through. If you do net, just make sure that you do check it every morning and afternoon. And of course, education. I think that there's a lot of people out there that just genuinely don't know anything about bats. So tell them, tell a friend yeah. and spread the message because bats are important and they're interesting and they're worthwhile and they need us and we definitely need them. Yeah, well, cool. thanks a lot, Sarah. Thanks no for doing worries. what you do. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for joining us on EnviroTube. I hope you've learned something about bats. I certainly have, and I hope to see you next time. As you can see, they're very vicious.